Have you lost your mind? Go! You disgust me! Go! Uh. And after all that stress, when you come upstairs to sleep, <laughs> you will see somebody's son. When I get that feeling, I want sexual healing. Come on, come on. <laughs> Those ones, stress, no, they affect their libido. So, hello, guys. <laughs> Hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it's me, your girl, Barista Neze, Neze Mwa, Neze Pepe Rempe, and this is Neze Pepe Rempe. <laughs> we are back for the Almighty Session. The session that you all have been waiting for is now upon you. <laughs> Shay, we did the one for the men. All of us were in the comment section. Go on, Neze. Write on, Neze. You are saying the fact, Neze. Neze, you are do. It is our turn. <laughs> Today is the day that the Lord has made. And you must rejoice and be glad in it. I warned you beforehand. I told you that I was going to open our bottom like this in Jakarta. To public glare. And today, I am here to fulfill that promise. So sit back. If you click out of this video halfway, <laughs> I finish you. Sit back and internalize everything that I'm going to say today. Because today, it is wuto wuto for the women. Oh yeah, let us start. <music> Dear African women, <laughs> do not come abroad do not even smell the shores, whether by land, sea, or air. Do not come abroad if you have refused to train your children. <laughs> if you do not want to train your children, nothing concern you, concern Obudo Ibo. <laughs> there are some women watching me here. At five years old, your child would eat. And sit down with the plate on the floor. You will call house help. <laughs> Boss, Chinasa, come and tighten this place that this child eats now. Five years cannot stand up and carry his plate to the kitchen. You have a six year old boy or girl, not in concern gender with chores here. Your six year old gets up on a weekend in the morning. He's not rushing to school to say, okay, that one is excuse. And he cannot lay his bed. Instead of you as the mother to correct him, oh yeah, sweetie, go and straighten your bed. Ngechi, <laughs> come and lay the bed that this boy woke up from now. And you have a seven-year-old. That child will finish eating and carry his plates and dump in the sink and now go and start watching cartoon. And you smile. You call the house help to go and wash it. <laughs> Some mummies, I see some mummies, the way they treat their children, ah, there's no harm in loving your children. In fact, eh, I'm one of the most loving mothers ever. But you see a mother treating a five-year-old, four-year-old, like newborn baby, newborn that is still sucking, is remaining to put pacifier in the baby's mouth. Get in, get in, get in, get in. Treating a child that you're supposed to start delegating some responsibilities to. Like a newborn baby, my sister, you will suffer here. <laughs> Some mummies, they would cook food. This child will say, I want this one. This child will say, I want this one. The third child will say, I want the other one. Don't get me wrong, there are some children that are allergic or do not like a specific food. That one is different. Not when you as the mother would cook for the house, then your five children We'll be having five different meals. I don't want this one. I want that one. When you come abroad, your eye go see your bottom. You see, some people watch my videos and they ask me, how did you get your children to start being involved in the house? To start participating in house chores? My dear brother and sister, as soon as they can walk. <laughs> what betide you walk before one year? It don't start for you. As little as... Sweetie, see this comb. We're watching the child. We're monitoring. Go and keep it inside that place. Bring me broom. Take this cup to the kitchen. It starts from as little as that. Bring that remote for me from the television. You engage the child in daily activities so that the child can grow getting used to being involved. Age appropriate 
appropriate chores. It will surprise you what these children are capable of. Even Chinaya, my last baby, that is just a few months old, <laughs> at the wait time for front, once she starts walking, she joins in. Go and keep this. Go and bring that. Go and get this. That was how I started with the children. There's a friend of mine that told me that, eh, hey, your children does chores because they were raised in Nigeria. I looked at I said, eh? They even had a chance not to be that domestic because in Nigeria, we had abundance of help. But I insisted, I made sure that despite we had helps, everybody had their task. Everybody had their responsibilities at home. I didn't carry all the load and hip on Chidima to be suffering from morning till night while my children are watching television and playing with toys. That can never happen in my home. Sometimes when my son is washing plates and Chidima finish eating and she wants to wash her plate, I'll say, drop it there, let him wash everything. Yes, she'll wash, he'll wash the help's plates. What is there? But our mommies in Nigeria, we will so train another person's child and neglect to train our own children, thinking we are doing our children a favor. We are shortchanging ourselves because we will be the biggest sufferers of what we've done to those children. And those house helps will be glad that you trained them. There is no excuse anywhere not to raise your children to be domestic. Look at the quality of children that our parents raised. Yes, our, our parents might not be the ideal models for parenthood, but pick those ones that they did right and implement it. If our parents were raising us, eh, Jaden, Jaden, smeh, 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 will we be these young women standing gidigbam now, facing our life's challenges? Working 12 hours shift and coming home to cook and taking care of the children? And will we turn out to be these women that are strong, and being able to hold our shit down now if our parents raised us the way we are raising these children now. That is why we are able to cope and survive in the real life. So why are we shooting ourselves in the legs? Why are we shortchanging these children? You know how you feel when you are busy running up and down, dressing the children, packing their bags, cooking, and your husband will go and cross leg in the car, waiting for you and blowing horn. Baby, baby, people should come out without even lifting a finger to help you. You know how you feel. So why are you leaving that kind of son for the next woman to suffer? Why are you not raising them so your daughter-in-law will not have to face the same stress that you faced? You see, I started raising my children that way, not because I wanted to relocate abroad. I didn't even know that I was going to relocate abroad when I started training these children like that. I already told myself that by the time my first son is 10, I don't want to have any house help. I want to be done with house help drama. So I started when they were small. I feel like this topic deserves its own video because it is so important. So many mummies are missing it. I will never forget the testimony of when I had my daughter. <laughs> when I had Chinayenwa, it was difficult. It was hell. My body felt like it just got crushed by a truck. I needed assistance. My recovery was slow. And just a few days after Naye was born, I hadn't even been discharged from the hospital. My husband got a call that he needed to come for an overseas job. They needed him on his site. I was so sad, so bitter because I needed him around. I needed help. But what will I do? <laughs> will I tell the young man to resign and come and help me with breastfeeding? But no. He had to go to work. If not my son, my first son, that stood in in the place of a husband at eight years plus, I don't think I would have survived that period. My first son moved into my room with me. He would help me with night duty. We, used to call, we call it night duty. That's staying awake with the child. And thankfully, Naya was born in December. So they were on school break. He wasn't going to wake up early the next morning to go to school. This boy will help stay with the baby. I would be able to sleep and recover from pains. He will run my bath water. Make sure that there's hot water in the flax. Lay the bed. Every single thing. I almost didn't feel my husband's absence because of the training that I have given this child. He would tidy the whole room, sweep, mop, clean, everything. Stood in as a husband for me. There are no disadvantages to it. If you train these children well, by the age of 12, 13, 14, you won't even be entering the kitchen anymore like that. These children would take up responsibilities from you. If you move abroad, especially if you are a woman with many children and all your children are just yakata, none of them is capable of doing anything. My sister, you go suffer. You go chop concrete. And do you know what stress does to you? 
stress turns you to an angry bird aggressive you start biting your husband like witch by the time the hus your husband is coming back from work you are you have kept fight waiting for him because you are frustrated you are overwhelmed you are overburdened the workload is too much for you but if you raise these children and train them to be domestic and to be helping out in the house you will be relieved. They will not be able to do everything, you know. They will do some, they will do it jaga jaga, but that is the only way they will learn. Is there anything that you have done before that you did it 100% accurately immediately you started? No! Don't say because they don't do it right. You now leave them, I mean, go, 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 and you do it by yourself. No. Let them keep doing it until they learn how to do it well. Incentivize them. Look at, this is one of the incentives. This is a piggy bank. I have always had this practice right from when I was in Nigeria. As you are working hard in the house, I am rewarding you with money. <laughs> Look at see savings. See their savings. Any method that works for you, start it. If you need to get them a piggy bank, if piggy bank is expensive, buy bangolo. Encourage them. Train these children. Because if you come abroad <laughs> without training your children, to be able to pick after themselves, to be able to clear their table and wash their dishes and lay their bed. You would work until you faint. In fact, some women, they don't even cope. They have to come back to Nigeria. Shine your eyes. Dear African women, <laughs> where my ladies at? All the married women, all the married women, hey, come to me. Now me and you get today. <laughs> we are damaging that table. Do not come abroad if you are lazy you know some of us women we are very lazy <laughs> some of us don't even hide it we openly admit i am the lazy type <laughs> i don't like stress i don't like work i love the baby girl life i loved the soft life mm -hmm. abroad forget what pictures is telling you there is no soft life here here is survival of the fittest <laughs> there's no lazy woman here oh. if you are lazy your home will fall apart don't even blame your husband if you are lazy your home will fall apart. You, you would constantly never be able to meet up. If you are that woman, that lazy woman, <laughs> that cannot get anything done without anybody helping them, you cannot self-motivate yourself and carry out tasks. You cannot challenge yourself. You are not hardworking. You just want to relax <laughs> and get taken care of. Oh yeah, let us do something together. Log into your express entry profile. It's okay, have you logged in? Oh yeah, click on that button. Click on the delete button. Yes, my sister. Delete your express entry profile because you're not gonna cope abroad. Some women in Nigeria, our routine is that we wake up in the morning by 9, 10. <laughs> and we call the house help. Busy to prepare your breakfast. They make your breakfast, you eat, you drop the plate, she washes it. And then they run your bath water. <laughs> you rub pancake. <laughs> oh baby, pancake. <laughs> you go rub them for your head. You go rub them for your neck. It's all right. Those are the semi hard working ones. Though. Some of them don't go even bother to bath. They will not bath. They will go to the parlor, cross their leg, and put Telemundo. From Telemundo to African magic. From African magic to Korean movies. They know all the Korean series showing on DSTV. And when it's time for lunch, they will give you afternoon food. <laughs> Wash your plates, arrange your room, even wash your pata. <laughs> your pata, somebody else will wash it for you. Then maybe you go out and go and make your hair or go for a nail appointment. And by the time you come back, lesson teacher is doing the children's homework. My sister, if you come here, you will get it wutu wutu. The contrast of life over here will hit you like a tsunami. You see, what made it easier for me to cope i'm not saying it's a bed of roses no but what is making it easier for me to cope with my new reality is that i have never been a lazy person right from nigeria i have always been an up and doing hard-working person hard-working woman it's not bragging it's a fact we have been factual in this video i have always led a very busy and hyperactive life you guys know all of it now for those that have been following me from working in nine to five to coming home taking care of children doing youtube practicing law i have always been up and doing and that is why when i came here and i'm seeing what i'm seeing it is not giving me <laughs> dizziness it is almost similar to what i was doing in nigeria even in nigeria i don't even leave the house chores for my house helps alone because if you overburden them they will run 
That is why my girls come and they stay because I always balance it out. I don't just overwhelm them with work. If you overwhelm anybody with work, the person will get depressed and sad and always angry. So I have always been domestic and hardworking and that is why I am coping. If not, sorry na my name. Why? Because there is nobody offering assistance here. Down to making your own hair. If you want to wear wig, you will conroll your own hair. Or else you have 50 or 60 dollars or 40 dollars. You want to be dashing somebody every week to, to weave your hair. Then you now drive 20 minutes in the snow to go and meet that person. If there are any small, small stitches to be done, small tear here, small tear there, you will stitch it. You will make your daughter's hair if you have girls. You will cook. You will clean. You will do school runs, supermarket runs. There is so much to do. It is not a place for a lazy person. So if you are that type <laughs> that want to relax and get taken care of, my sister, don't smell this place because it will be too hard on you. Make you no go enter depression. Let me paint a short scenario of what your day may look like before we go to the next point. <laughs> you wake up by maybe five o'clock. You start to whoop up breakfast that the children will take to school, pack their snacks, do this, do that. You wake the children up, get them ready for school. You might even need to tidy the house that morning if the house is upside down. You take them to school, either you walk them to school or you drive them to school. If you're a 9 to 5 person, you go to work. You walk from 8 o'clock to maybe 5. You come back, you go and pick your children from daycare. You go and pick your children from after school. You run back home. You start making dinner, clothes in the laundry. You have to take out trash. Football appointment is tomorrow. Your floor is dirty, you mop. You wash plate or you put in dishwasher, load and offload. And after all that stress, when you come upstairs to sleep, <laughs> you will see somebody's son. Wow. When I get that feeling, I want sexual healing. Come on, come on. <laughs> Those ones, stress, no, they affect their libido. Your eyes go roll back. But guy man will not pity you. <laughs> he will show no mercy. Even if you lie down there like log of wood, or God will still take his pound of flesh. He will still proceed to reap the gem points of the bright price that was paid on your head. <laughs> you must pay back every dime, my sister. There is always so much to do. It is not a place for a lazy woman. So if you are lazy, my sister, remember home.